Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that, and last time, we discussed the responses of Jesus to his critics. Today, we'll discuss some of the dishonesty that Jesus was faced with and how he dealt with it. Of course, the most obvious kind of dishonesty is... You do the works of your father. They said therefore to him, We are not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus therefore said to them, If God were your father, you would indeed love me. For from God I proceeded and came, for I came not of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not know my speech? Because you cannot hear my word. John eight forty one to 43 The Pharisees spoke a direct falsehood to Jesus in this verse, though it's possible that they may have thought it was true. When Jesus hears the deception, he immediately calls it out, denying the truth of their claim about being children of God, and providing reasons to prove his point. However, not all attempts to deceive Jesus were so directly stated. And the devil led him into a high mountain, and shewed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, To, to thee will, will I, give I give all, all this, this power, power, and the and glory, glory of them. them. For to For me to they are delivered, delivered, and to whom I will I give them. them. If thou, thou therefore wilt adore, adore before me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answering said to him, It is written, Thou shalt adore the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Luke 4, 5-8 The devil's offer to Jesus was insincere in at least one way. While it's most likely that Satan never really intended to deliver these kingdoms he promised, even if he had, it wouldn't have been a gift. A gift is something that's offered freely from one person to another. Satan wanted Jesus to believe that adoring him was a mere gesture, which wouldn't cost him anything. However, in reality, disobeying the will of God costs more than anything else. Like all deals with the devil, it ultimately comes back to bite you in the end. As with the deceptions leveled against him by other human beings, Jesus rejects Satan's offer, and in this case, guards against him with the commandments found in the scriptures. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, asking him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And sighing deeply in spirit, he saith, Why doth this generation seek a sign? Amen, I say to you, a sign shall not be given to this generation. Mark eight eleven to 12 Another form of dishonesty is the dishonest question or request. Asking a question when you have no intention of listening to the answer, or requesting something you plan on refusing to accept in any case. Jesus knows that people who demand signs from God in this way are generally being dishonest with their request. After all, Jesus performed lots of miracles, which are definitely signs from God, and the people of Israel had all the prophecies of the Messiah to rely on. They shouldn't have needed more signs than those, and sure enough, lots of people didn't. Jesus doesn't play along with people who falsely request something they don't plan to accept, and neither should we. Then one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, he that was about to betray him, said, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? No, he said this, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and having the purse carried the things that were put therein. Jesus therefore said, Let her alone, that she may keep it against the day of my burial. John twelve four to 7 this is in reference to a woman who used an expensive ointment on Jesus. Here we see false moral indignation coming from none other than the betrayer of Jesus himself. Of course, there is such a thing as real moral indignation when we see something horrible being done and criticize it, but this can easily be faked as well. In fact, it's actually very common for someone to pretend to be morally repulsed for the purpose of serving their own selfish goals right up to modern times. Imprudence is what Judas accuses the woman of, who used the ointment on Jesus, and it's definitely one of the easiest things to accuse people of, since almost any form of imperfection, real or perceived, can be interpreted or misconstrued as imprudence. 
Because no one is perfect, these faults are easy to find. However, Jesus tells Judas to stop and defends the woman accused of imprudent action because he recognizes that she actually did make the right choice. He doesn't call Judas out for his dishonesty at this point, most likely because he knows that Judas still has a part to play in his passion and death on the cross, but perhaps also because he doesn't want to discourage authentic moral revulsion when real evil is being done. Being very critical of Judas in public at this point might send a confusing or scandalous message to the people nearby at the time, though of course with the benefit of hindsight we know that he deserved it. So we see that Jesus refuted false and misleading statements, using reason and the scriptures to prove the weaknesses of dishonest claims and offers. He protected people who were accused by dishonest moral indignation, showing mercy and compassion on them, and refused to try to fulfill the requests of people who he knew had no intention of changing their ways. In all of these ways, we can see the wisdom and honesty of Jesus, his commitment to the truth, which is, after all, himself. Next time, Jesus' reactions to enemies. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.